Hi, I'm Susan, fitness from the pro and TPI golf certified specialist. Today we're going to talk about how important it is to get into our golf stance, how important it is to have the disassociation of the lower body, and how important it is to have the disassociation from the upper body. It's imperative to have a really good golf swing that gives you power and distance if you have the proper body mechanics to execute the golf swing. That is, you get the power from the ground and it goes into your hips, into the thorax, into that lead arm, and finally into the, the golf shaft. So let's start off with our pelvic tilts to help us get into the proper golf posture. So I like to, I like to uh, demonstrate this by having my index fingers and I'll put my index fingers on the top of my hip bones. And then take those thumbs on the bottom of your ribs. Now in your mind, I want you to think about bringing the hip bones toward the rib bones and then relaxing that. Hip bones toward the rib bones and relaxing. Hip bones toward the ribs. So you see how I'm doing that pelvic tilt here? <sighs> Some of you may think that this is a pelvic tilt. I'm not using my hips. I'm using my hip flexors. I'm bending from the hip flexors. So if you need to work on that, I recommend laying on a harder surface, not doing it in bed, but practice pushing the low back into the spine, bringing those hip bones to meet the rib bones, and vice versa. Okay? Now, if we're not in the proper golf stance, we'll see some of this rounded shoulders, that C curve, and those hips are pushing forward. If you're too much arching that back, you'll get that S curve and that booty is sick sticking out there. So to get into the proper sequence, we're going to arch that back, push the hips forward, arch the back again, and then come to a neutral spine. Once again, arch the back, hips go forward, arch the back, neutral spine. So that's important to get into that proper golf stance. We're going to move on now to talk about how important it is to have that lower body separation or lower body disassociation. And we're going to start off with some stork turns. So I want you to take that right leg and bring it behind the left leg. And this is assisted here, which can be challenging. And some days are better um, balanced days than others. So I'm going to put, bring my right foot behind my left knee. Now my right knee is facing forward, standing up nice and tall. I'm going to twist my hips to the left. <sighs> Easier said than done. See how my hips are twisting? Now some of you may think this is twisting. All you're doing is moving that knee. Standing tall, engage your core, rotate, rotate. Good. Now we're going to switch that. I find it easier just to have the golf club on one side than the other. So we're going to take that left leg and bring it behind the right leg. My knee is facing forward. I'm standing up nice and tall. Once again, notice my hips. My shoulders are staying stationary, but my hips are going to be moving. <sighs> my shoulders aren't moving, just my hips. Again, it's not this, okay? Good. Now, that's assisted stork turn. You can do it unassisted, but for the sake of time, we'll just move on here. We're going to add on to some hip twists. Again, the disassociation of the lower body and the upper body. So we'll start off holding the club right out in front of us 
and our legs are wide. And once again, it is that disassociation. We're just going to move the hips. The shoulders stay square. So rotate those hips to the left. See, my shoulders are still. If that's too hard with a wider stance, it's a little bit easier if you bring those legs together. And now we're going to rotate that left hip to the right. My shoulders are still and just my hips are moving. Your hip twisters. Let's move on now to the upper body separation or disassociation. We're going to put the club down for now and I want you to cross those arms in front of you right on your shoulders and let's get into that that golf posture. What do we do? We push the booty back, we tuck under, we arch that back again and come into a neutral spine. Now my hips are not going to move. I'm going to rotate that left shoulder. My hips are facing forward. Let's do the same thing with the right shoulder. My hips aren't moving. Let's just try it again so you can see. Hips don't lie. Upper body only. Upper body only. And you want to practice that, okay? It's very important for your downswing because it begins with the upper body. Adding on here, this is going to be a little bit challenging. <coughs> Grab your golf club and we're going to step that left leg back. <coughs> and once again, we're going to keep those hip bones facing forward. They are not going to move. Now in order to keep your knee safe here, guys, I want you to make sure when you bend that front knee, that right knee is just above the ankle, okay? And all of the weight is in the heel. I also want you to keep that posture nice and tall. I don't want you to lean forward here, okay? So just some posture reminders here. Now, I'm bending both knees, both knees. My arms are right out shoulder height. I'm going to turn just my upper body toward the knee that's in front. So I'm going to turn to the right because it's the right leg in front. Abdominals are engaged. Inhale here. Keep those hip bones facing forward and come back center. Rotate and come back center. Now, I've seen just the arms move and people think they're rotating. Okay, not so, I'm afraid to say. Chin parallel to the ground, upper body rotates, comes back center. Upper body rotates, comes back center. Go ahead and step forward. And now we're going to have that right leg step back. And again, please be mindful about that, that knee protection, the weights in that heel, those arms are shoulder height, shoulders are back, we're not leaning forward, the belly button is pulled into the spine. Now we're going to turn toward that left leg and center. Good. Once again, I want you to think about keeping those hip bones facing forward. And it's not just the arms moving, okay? And we're not moving the hips just that upper body once again. Good. Now you're going to step forward and we're moving on to our 
W turn. Again, just for that upper body. So take that golf club. Put it on the meaty part of your back. Now I don't want you to put it on your neck. That's bad for your neck and your spine. Put it on the meaty part of your back. Now if you look at me, I'm a W. Down, up, down, up. Here I am, W. So you can see why it's called a W turn. So now let's get into that golf posture, right? You're going to stick that booty back, arch that butt, push those hips forward, arch the back, come to that neutral spine. Now I want you to bring that right shoulder down toward the ground and back to center. If you wish, you can keep your head looking down at that golf ball. The hips aren't moving, so we're not doing this. Okay, this is what we're doing. So let's do it on the other side. Once again, arch that back. Push those hips forward. Arch the back again. Come to that neutral spine. Now we're going to take that left shoulder down. My hips are not moving. One more. And stand up nice and tall. So those are a couple of exercises that you could practice at home for that very important body disassociation. Because if the golf body movements aren't in the proper sequencing, you're not going to get that power and distance that you want. So thank you for joining me today. We're going to keep uploading golf tips and other kinds of um, activity on the LWCA Fitness YouTube channel. So we do hope that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment on the video. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me.